guys. Um, my name is Nick Nigro, and this is a, a little, I guess, insight on uh, my life. September 8th, 1990. You know, this this crazy beam of light struck down and uh, I, I happened to be born. And, uh, you know, I was born into a, a really good family. I was the first grandchild. You know, I learned how to manipulate at a very young age. And that obviously was not good for me <laughs> in the long run because obviously, uh, you know, the way things turned out in my life, it wasn't too good, but today, you know, I'm learning from those experiences. Like, I don't know, for some reason, it seems like September 11th, 2001, and it just happened to be that way. Like, it was around that same time that, you know, my father w went into a rehab for uh, using, you know, cocaine and abusing alcohol, methamphetamine, all these crazy drugs. And like, I was young at the time, but I didn't really know what was going on. And, you know, going to see my father in a, like, I, I viewed it as a mental institution or something. Like, it kind of had me sick in my stomach. Like, I thought everything was over. Like, things were so different than they were when I was growing up. But, I know, I went on. I got good grades. Never failed anything. I went to Catholic school my whole life, you know. Like, I was such a good kid. You know, that's what my family thought, at least. And, uh, I wasn't. I didn't know how to live my life. Like, only thing I knew was fun. That, that is like the basis of my story is my perception of fun. Like I'll keep saying that. I don't care if you guys get tired of it because that's the reality. Like life is what I make it and I made it into a fucking living hell. But then things started changing a little bit. I got these, uh, met some new people who were doing new drugs to me. You know, pills like oxycodone, Xanax, uh, pretty much anything you can name. They were doing it and I was down. Cause like now I fit in with these people. We kept, uh, we kept doing shit and you know, from age 19 to 20, you know, smoking weed, drinking, doing Coke, doing Molly, doing Xanax, doing ecstasy and, and fucking oxys turned into none of that and just shooting heroin. It went like from one crazy extreme to the next extreme and I fell in love with it like it took me three days from sniffing heroin to going to shooting it alone in my in my bedroom like I taught myself how to do it that's how uh, fucked up I am you know I, I did it alone knowing the fact that I could die like right away but that wasn't even the thing I wanted to get high and the shit I was doing sniffing it wasn't working anymore so I decided to load up a syringe and shoot up dope and that's exactly what I did and <laughs> from there life spiraled you know I come home from a long day and I just picked up a bunch of drugs you know I wanted to get high really bad and I was dope sick you know so I was freaking out I didn't get, didn't get high for like 12 13 hours and I come home go into my room right here so I'm over here waiting all of a sudden I hear a knock 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 on the door I was like, oh no, what the hell is this? Like at this time I had a warrant after my arrest because I'd been on the run from probation. And I was, I already knew what the time was. So, you know, I, I went to the window, I was like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, definitely cops are here. So I looked at my girlfriend, I was like, hey babe, it's over. This, this is it, this is where it ends. Apparently there was a suspicious vehicle call on my work van. The work van is just a white work van with some windows and no like company tags, no nothing. So like it was super sketchy, I guess, like going to get these drugs. And at this point, I'm only wearing shorts, socks, and nothing else. That's all I got on. And I'm walking around the house, all strung out, my hair's down to here, look completely ridiculous. So as I'm doing this, I'm walking down the stairs, the cop follows me back upstairs, I'm like, I'm not gonna go back to my room because that's where the drugs are, so I come in here. This is my grandfather's room, like, I walk around, he's like, what are you doing? I was like, dude, I don't know, I need some water. I was like, I need some water right now. As soon as I hit this thing, I turn on the freaking jets. I'm not running, but I'm like power walking towards this way. And like, 
soon as I get around here, I realize that the cop, still at the bottom of the stairs, hits this way, and now I'm off. Like, in my head the whole time. This is my whole plan. I'm like, I'm not going to jail. Detoxing in jail. Like, it's, I'm, not, I'm not going through all that shit. So, like, I know this, and not everyone does. So, as soon as I hit this door, in, like, one motion, I swung it, locked it. As I locked it, I shut it. The cop behind me took him, like, I don't even know how long, because I was gone. I hopped this thing, like literally came out, hopped over this, and took off down that way. And just know that it's always a possibility. If I go back out and choose to do that, it's over. Like, I talked about it earlier, it's over. Death is a high, high, high possibility in this life. And I, I completely accept that. And I choose today not to die.